This is an Anon 100D. I want to measure the sideband noise on 50 MHz for this transmitter, the Angelia board. Uh, there will be modifications I'm going to do on the board and I need to measure also on 50 MHz. But I don't have a receiver with performance to do such measurements on 50 MHz. As it happens, I have here a large collection of crystals for 52 MHz. I'm selecting them, take one, put into the network analyzer, like that, so I can see what is the frequency of resonance. And this one is uh, 550 hertz below the nominal frequency of 52. So I write 550 on it. I am going to use these crystals to make a transmission line notch filter. Here is now one of them on the network analyzer. You can see the impedance on the resonance is about 15 ohms. This is at the power level of minus 40 dBm. If I change the power and go for power uh, 10 dBm, you can see it changes dramatically. The impedance, the point of low impedance moves upwards and surely this is going to create intermodulation and other things. So what I can do is to put another crystal in parallel. Uh, this one, I put it now in parallel. It brings the situation much closer to ideal. The resonance is not far away from where it were before and the impedance is now much lower so the attenuation it will give is lower, is higher. Uh, but if I put in parallel another crystal which doesn't have exactly the same resonance frequency this one is different by one kilohertz and we get this result and if I change the power level uh, we are at power so minus 40 dBm the curve changes a bit not as much as before but it's, prefer it's a good idea to select the crystals to have the same frequency when they are connected in parallel because near the resonance one is near the resonance but not exactly on the resonance one is inductive and the other uh, could be capacitive so they form a parallel resonator and that's why we have a peak here that's not desirable. Uh, with a much wider uh, frequency range I can see on the Smith charge that the capacitance of these crystals is in the order of 6 pF. And now I make a box from PCB laminate. Just soldering first a little and then more carefully. With 10 crystals in parallel uh, I can get one section of a lumped delay line by use of 180 nano henrys and a tuning capacitor on the other side right now uh, to replace the second group of crystals. And this is what I can see on the network analyzer. Uh, this first link has a phase shift of very close to 90 degrees on 52 megahertz and the standing wave is good 
uh, at 52 megahertz and some megahertz above that. With a narrow frequency span we can see that the attenuation is 26 decibels or something and of course at that point the standing wave ratio is very high. All the power is reflected back into the network analyzer. Now this is one group of crystals for one link of the lumped delay line. I will now add some more links. Now the lumped transmission line has two sections with three groups of crystals. And this is the wide range performance, standing wave ratio and attenuation. And you can see it's flat around 52 megahertz. In the narrow range, as expected, the standing wave ratio is very high uh, at the notch center. The attenuation looks like 55 dB, but it's very noisy. One could suspect this is because the power level is too low, so I change that. Power is 0 dBm, I go for minus 40 which is much less to see if it becomes much worse. And it doesn't. And the problem is uh, presumably that this uh, signal generator in the network analyzer is very noisy. It's a sideband noise from uh, when the carrier is pretty close. I can try a different bandwidth for system bandwidth, let's say 250 hertz, like that. And it does not make, make much difference. Now it's getting slow, very slow. But this is what it looks like, 55 dB. Now there are six groups of crystals. And I must uh, mention that the reason I'm using so many crystals in parallel is that this transmission line is 50 ohms. And I want 50 ohms because I want this to go from DC up to 60 megahertz or something and having this notch at 52. If I was only interested in the close range I could transform the impedance to a much higher value and use six crystals only and get the same performance more or less. Maybe the notch would not be as sharp as it is now but the power handling would be improved uh, by the higher impedance means less current so the work that now needs many crystals in parallel could be done with just a single crystal. The wide range performance looks like this. Uh, now the network analyzer is properly calibrated and you can see the insertion loss goes from zero at one megahertz up to uh, 3 dB at 70 megahertz and it's within 1 dB up to 60 megahertz. Standing wave ratio is below 1.4 up to 55 megahertz or so. So this is a nice thing that will not affect signals much but it will rem remove a carrier on 52 megahertz. In the narrow range, the 3 dB points are separated by about 15 kilohertz. And the notch seems to be 55 dB now also. 
despite the many more links in the, the, in the transmission line. Uh, so now again, uh, I check the bandwidth, system bandwidth, and go down to fine 15 hertz. And we will see what happens now. And this is quite different. It seems to go down to about 90 dB. A little bit hard to say. Uh, power is now 0 dBm. I can increase it to see if the noise is due to the noise figure of the instrument. Well, at least 80 dB, we can say. I will now check the notch with this signal generator. It is now uh, 50 kilohertz below the notch, so the signal through should be attenuated by a little less than 1 dB only. And what I see on the spectrum analyzer is plus 8 dBm and the signal generator says plus 10 dBm but there is some cable loss plus the loss of the filter and the accuracy of the instrument so this looks fine I will step upwards in steps of 10 kilohertz there is the notch there we are above again I go back close to the notch here and I have to bring up the sensitivity we had reference level here 8 dBm amplitude uh, reference level let's say minus uh, 22 uh, dBm and here we can see the noise on the sides and what comes through of the carrier I can step it in smaller steps sorry step size step size now I'm stepping in 100 Hertz downwards Here it goes up. But there is a range. And here it goes up again. So the suppression is 80 dB over several, several hundred hertz. And I can see the phase noise from the signal generator. If I unplug it, this is what we have. So this is something that can now be used to look at the Anam 100D. I have now set the Anam to transmit at 51.95 megahertz uh, at maximum power. And I'm picking up the signal uh, directly on the DA converter and sending it into another computer here where Linrad is running with an PCIe 9842. It's sampling at 200 megahertz 
so the bandwidth is 100 megahertz. We have the desired signal here, and here is the alias signal, which as one should expect has about the same amplitude. The level I have set to show zero on the S meter. If I go on the alias and no, this direction. It's not so easy to find signals when the bandwidth is so large. But here we are. I should have a bigger step like that. And the alias is about 3 decibels weaker. We have a lot of signals here and some of them are because of aliases from the receive side. Uh, to make sure I know what I'm doing I will insert a bandpass filter. This thing. The bandpass filter is tunable from about 25 megahertz to about 70 megahertz. So this way I can see which signals are real and which are uh, artifacts. So for example what we see here and here are the aliases of those two that are caused by the uh, Nyquist frequency at 100 megahertz on the receive side so they are not anything emitted by uh, by the anon but this is a real signal and with the filter losses included uh, we have it coming here. It is suppressed by 35 dB and it is on 32.96. And what that is, I don't know. This is a first preliminary study to get acquainted with the problems going upwards. And here is the real signal now. It's attenuated through the filter a little bit. So, but I have removed the attenuator I had before. So the level calibration is not so accurate, but that's not the point of what I'm doing right now. But you can see odd things. For example, this signal here is an artifact on the receive side. It behaves very differently from other things. So uh, I will now insert the notch filter. The bandwidth is set to 10 kilohertz. And since the signal is 50 kilohertz below the notch, uh, it's in the flat region of this notch filter. Uh, the notch is 50 kilohertz up from here here I will tune the frequency of the anon upwards and look at what happens on the screen on the main spectrum wrong direction here we go It's 
now 968 970 and we can see spurs move around and sometimes they join together to form something that looks so this is a magic frequency it is 51.987 and then the spurs go apart again and we are approaching the notch so getting into the notch here the signal becomes very low but you can see the noise floor on the sides of the notch it's pretty strong and it's not because of the receiver it's because of the transmit side and I'm not evaluating anything because uh, obviously the level of the spurs if I look at some of the spurs here well I have to move the scale like that this one is suppressed by 70 decibels and that's the order of magnitude if I go closer well here these are close range spurs and 70 60 B or something I think this should be improved I don't think it is the hardware performance I think this is in the FPGA this one looks funny here 